Okay, we have today uh, Stephen M. Smith and Louisa Warren with us today um, from the wonderful film Ghosts of Borley Rectory. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and thank you so much for giving us the world premiere of your film. Um, Stephen, can you give us a very brief outline of what the film's about? Um, okay, so it's about Harry Price, um, his investigation of Borley Rectory in 1937, which was recorded uh, very accurately because of his investigation and what he did. So we, um, I think that yeah, it, the true events, basically, there are so many things that didn't happen and we didn't show, but it, you could have probably made 10 movies out of what happened between 1937 and 1938. But it's, uh, it's really kind of reveals what we what we really think was happening in Borley Rectory. Fantastic. Um, so the inspiration been going around for a while. When did you get the original concept? Uh, I've been fascinated by Borley for well, ever since I was a child. So um, I actually made a movie called The Haunting of Borley Rectory in 2019, which was very successful financially. Um, but I wanted to to go back and really write a, a story that was more true to the story. That story was a little bit different, um, but yeah, that's my inspiration. Really, has always been with the unexplained, and this is something that is unexplainable and will always be unexplainable because the rectory burnt down. Mm. So there's no way of actually going back and investigating at all because there's just an empty garden and very few witnesses surviving. From yes, that. there's no one because it's 1939 that it burnt down. 1938 or 1939 it burnt down. Um, that it was just before the war. So then of course you had more pressing agendas and before you know it, the place was completely falling down after the fire and then demolished in the 1950s. So you've got your inspiration, it's been going on for many years. When did this actual script, when did you get this script going? And in addition to that, when did Louisa come on board? So I've made films with Louisa, a few films before. Mum, which screened here last year, um, which is called Dollhouse. And I really, I mean, Louise is brilliant because she is able to take a lot of those pressures off of you that you perhaps aren't able to put 100% into the movie because of that. So I basically pitched the idea like I do normally to distributors, and they've said, yes, we want one of those. This one was different. I basically knew that I'd probably be able to sell it based on the previous film, so I decided to go and make it myself using the, 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 the micro-budget system, um, knowing that I wanted to try and step it up um, and give a, a better quality film than last time, which I think I've done. And we agree. <laughs> so, Louisa, you've come on board. You've worked with Stephen before on Dollhouse, which we've seen. Thank yeah. you for showing that last year to us. And, of course, Dead Again, which you oh, yeah, Dead very Again. graciously showed here. Um, you come on board. You've seen the script. What's your initial thoughts? Well, I love ghosts. I love the paranormal. I love the fact that nobody can prove it's right, like it's there. But then you've always got scientists that are like, no, it's not there. And so I feel that as a subject, it's something that captivates a larger audience because it sparks debate. And obviously, as a big horror fan, um, additionally, that was something that I definitely wanted to get involved in. OK, that sounds fantastic. So you've come on board with Stephen, having worked with him before anyway, so you know what he's like to work with. Um, and she still wanted to do <laughs> it. And she still wanted to. <laughs> I still came <play> back. <laughs> Glutton for punishment, you. Um, <laughs> How do we get to the casting? Tell us, did you have people in mind, Stephen, Louisa? How did that work? Well, Julian, he, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with Julian, mm -hmm. and we were trying to create a Borley film a few years ago. Um, but he did always say to me, if you are going to do a film, I may be interested in doing something. And obviously, Julian's very old school. He's been in lots of films like Warlock mm -hmm. and, and A Room with a View. Um, so what I did was I specifically sat down and wrote the scene around the table mm. and just sent him that scene. And based on that scene alone, he said he'd want to do it. So that's basically how it happened with virtually the whole of all those names cast. It was kind of, you know, he sent them this scene and they said, yeah, that's good. Um, I'd love to do it. 
So I think then the rest of the script came together um, around that. Fantastic. So you weren't involved in the casting at all, kind of Stephen Adam. She was. Mind. The other. The other part. The other I think part. I kind of okay. yeah. those key casts, but I think it's. It was key for us to work with predominantly people that we'd known before. Yeah. And for example, Toby um, was in another film that I did, and we sent him the. Um, the script. A, a, no, we sent him a video yeah, we of did, yeah. Harry Price. Yeah. Mm. And he came back with this incredible audition. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> which was like that. Which was exactly like him, his mannerisms. Mm. We were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said he's on board. Yeah. Well, we said we said this. We said there was one other person, and funny enough, it was David who played Reverend Hen. Mm. But he couldn't. His availability was pretty poor anyway. So basically, David still did Reverend Henning, but Harry, uh, being Harry Price, I think what what what's great with Toby is that uh, because he's a method actor, he's able to if he can if you can get it, you've got it. And I think he went with it, and we discussed it, and he didn't go completely Harry Price. He kind of just went a little bit of showman, and but, but quite a serious person. So you knew Toby? I knew Toby as well, but Toby had only, I'd never worked on any of my films, but Toby had worked on films that Louise has done. Different roles completely, right? right? right. Um, Layla was from, we did the documentary. Layla was in the documentary, so if you, at the beginning of the Bawley film, there's some bits on there uh, where she sees the skull and she looks up to the camera. Those are all shot for a drama doc that we had put together for Channel 5. Mm. So um, that's something that we thought, well, we could include bits of that in there. So Layla was always going to be cast. Um, and there was, I mean, it's just other people like Reese yeah. and... We have um, regulars, yeah. yeah. Reese, Lee, it, Richard, yeah. Is Reese is a regular. I, I, well, re regular with, with Louisa. Me, and the thing oh. is, it's like, if Louisa's worked with them, I trust Louisa. So she'll say, what about Reese?" And then I chat, have a chat with Reese, and then you, you work out, well, actually, I think when you're making these films, it's, it's not just about how great this person's going to be. It's whether they've got any baggage or whether they've got anything about them that's going <laughs> to be a worry. And we say red flags. It's funny red because we all go, <laughs> we'll be interviewing someone, she'll go, I've got some red flags. I'll go, I've got more red flags. And then you move <laughs> on, and you're very polite. So we found, I think the thing is, she's worked with these people before, and I kind of trust that. So then I, I think what I tend to do is I tend to sometimes think of the cast and then rewrite bits of the script based on them. Mm. So it fits them a bit better. What a wonderful pleasure to have. Yeah, to well, it's... To do that privilege, in fact. Well, it, yeah, I'm quite a quick writer, so I know that... that Fantastic writer. So he'll send me something, and I'll be like, how did you do that in that short space of time? Yeah. It's amazing. So I think that scene, that scene was written in two days. That scene, that table scene. Yeah, ten, ten minutes. Ten minute table scene. <laughs> what about the epilogue? That was well. Uh, the whole script. I had about twelve different drafts, but I think the one that I went with really only took about five days to write. Mm -hmm. So, but once I get into it, I write it and then. But yeah. You're going, don't don't ring me today. <laughs> I'm right. I'm busy. busy. My <laughs> wife thinks I'm at home going. Ugh, I'm getting drunk. Did she see you? Did she ever? So back to Toby. I, I got to say, I was pretty blown away with his performance. Yeah, it, it's incredible how he captured. And so you've said he's kind of brought a lot of that on the initial video. How much did you have to nurture it? Well, as I said, I think I, sat, I chatted to him and I said, if we went like Harry Price, who is the real Harry Price, mm. he's very fumbly. He's very in front of the camera. He's very kind of very posh and just doesn't seem right as if he's putting it on and then all the things you hear about harry price in real in real life he was a showman he was always smartly dressed um virtually smoking continuously and was looked older than he was um and was basically uh how can i put it i think he was a bit of a um a bit of a kind of all, all furry he kind of wanted to be in charge of everything. Mm, mm. So that's what I kind of said to him, just put those bits into it. And yeah, he, he then, well, there was one scene where we were filming the scene around the table where he's telling the story. Mm. And I remember afterwards, it was the first take, wasn't it? Mm. And he said he wanted to do another take. And, I, and we all clapped <laughs> at the end of the first, I've never seen on the set. where Because obviously we're filming these scenes in long one long go. And we all clapped. And then Toby went, I want another one. I said, no. 
I said, if everybody's applauded on a film set, you yeah. know you've got it. Stop there. Yeah, exactly. So he's a perfectionist. Yeah. It, it was great. Yeah. You know, I came away and straight away I just said to the others on it, I'm a wall. <laughs> it was a really good performance. I really enjoyed it. And I didn't know him. You see, I'd not seen him previous, so it was a really a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Um, so the location, let's get on to the location that you actually shot in. Okay, so yeah, I've shot there a few times. Uh, yeah. I don't really want to disclose too much about this location unless everyone yeah. else goes there and films, but it's a beautiful location. Mm. It's in Devon. Let's leave I, it at that. I know them very it's well, so and it's so super cozy. haunted, yeah. for real. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. We'll, oh. we'll leave that there because we've had say some, too much about we've had so some you, weird stuff. I'm definitely stuff. not going anymore. Uh, oh, no, we're going I'll again. Go, I love ghosts. I'll go all we'll the time we're I can. Yeah. We'll definitely go down there again. I think we need to be aware of these things that happen. And you, you, you put a really, and it's very noticeable, the, the, the effort that went into the, the title sequence and the credits. Is that something that really was important to you? I think it was important to start the film in a way which cap gets the audience. Um, I, w I think that the opening few minutes of a movie are very, very important now with things like TikTok. It's people's, ex you know, their attention span is 30 seconds. So... That way I'm kind of telling the story within the opening title sequence. Yeah, which you did. And, and of course, the music worked wonderfully there. Yeah, Darren's, really nice Darren's a wonderful composer, isn't he? And you mixed all the real photos in. So all those yeah. photos yes. are real bally and, yes. and the really things. So yes. it gives you a subtle, oh, subtle reference that he's put the coat on the back of the door mm. and mm. the sparseness of the room. That's fantastic. Um, so just into some of the nitty gritty stuff. I've, got, I've written here, the shoot, the time of the shoot, how long it took, what challenges happened, either of you? The challenge of the green screen, yes. I don't know if you noticed in the film, but Steve had this incredible idea. You know with, when the bells ring, that main oh. corridor, yeah. that's not real, that's a big green background. Yeah. And Steve got a photo of the actual house, and the VFX artist has rebuilt the house in the background. And when I was watching it just then, I was like, you can't tell that that's not there. No. And it's all these so little the, so, moments so the people that are mad about Bordy, because there's a lot of academics and stuff like that, they're going to go, that's what Bordy looked like inside. Mm -hmm. The only the thing is, obviously, with our budget restraints, we weren't able to do every room or every mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's what we did. And we went to the Harry Price collection, got photos of uh, licensing on the photos so that we could use them and based it on that. And luckily, the place that we filmed at is pretty derelict in places so that it looks a bit like all inside anyway. You can build it, we put like a fireplace in, oh. we recreate stuff from the photos, so the thermometer, the blankets, the suitcases, I try to match it to the exact photos. Mm. Steve found a, a house that looks the same. Yeah, and then we just coloured it mm. in post, so it was a yellow bricked house. Um, but I think it was eight days, wasn't it? <laughs> eight days. I eight days. Shows. Yeah. Right. And I think we had an additional day to do all the establishing oh, yeah, bits yeah. and stuff like that. Quite so. a taskmaster, by the sound of it. <laughs> well, it would have been nice to have had three weeks, yes. you know, and who knows what, you know. What we just do what we can with the budget. Is that we eight do. straight days? Yeah. No rest in at all? No, we, were shoot, we actually had ten days there. We shot two days on another film, picking up stuff. Don't even go there, what she does. No, we won't go <laughs> there. We won't go there. We won't go there. So, so... Uh, Next project. We're shooting a movie now, didn't you know? <laughs> yeah. We're just waiting for the actors on cue. Action. <laughs> there is another project that we can't say too much at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that you're doing together. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Anything other than that that you'd like to talk about and give a little plug? Uh, well, I, I mean, I've, I've got a couple of things coming up that are, are, are decent, small projects, slightly bigger budget than what we've spent. Um, there may be a possibility of a follow-up to this. That was going to be one of my questions. Um, which has been discussed with the distribution company already. Um, what, 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 what it will be, I don't know. But um, we'll see how this does. I think it hopefully will do well. Um, and we would then think about that. But the thing is, we go where they ask us to go half the time. And suddenly Louisa will, oh, I'm off now. I've got to do three movies in a row. <laughs> I don't even know about that, but it's 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 kind of like we've been finishing projects as well. So we've got, I've I had about eight projects that hadn't been finished, uh, where we'd gone and shot stuff and we just didn't have enough time to finish them, and we went and shot stuff, didn't we, for a day, and then we've done posts and things like that. So, you play catch up. 
Yeah, and then do, and just doing the run, the everyday thing that you do as a production company, which is chasing distribution companies, chasing investors, chasing everything, writing new stuff and stuff like that. So I have about eight projects now that um, are scripted. I have a big project that Louisa knows about that we, we hopefully is going to be massive. So we, we're looking, hopefully, on the back of this, about riding the waves. Yeah. You know, you could do five, she could, Louisa is like me, she could do three or four films. What you need is one to just stand out and then you start to ride that wave to get the backers and to get distribution on something bigger. Because it's, it's about constantly time. constantly waiting, which one's going to strike that one. And you mm. never know. Mm. So at the moment, Dead Again is number one in Denmark. I didn't know that. That's fantastic. <laughs> right. Congratulations. <laughs> So I don't know how that happened, but it is. I know it, it went to Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. It's brilliant. In a weird deal. So um, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, and I get films. In, we've had films in South Korea. Dollhouse went to South Korea. Did it? Yeah. No idea what the cover says. <laughs> <laughs> it's all new. <laughs> so before we wrap up, a couple of uh, more light, easier, though uh, those easy questions for you. But um, big horror fan. Yes. Give us one or two favourites. Right, the ultimate number one is Gaspar Noé Climax. Okay. Because it's in real time, I feel that as an audience member, when the horror aspects are happening, you know that you're not going to cut away from it anytime soon. And the way that I felt, I saw it at the London Film Festival, the way I'll never forget how I felt watching that film, and I never want to see it ever again, because I don't want to take my experience of what I felt at that time. Number two, well, I would say maybe. The um, ghost of Bordy Rectory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you missed an opportunity there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, butterfly Effect. Is that a horror film? Yeah. Yeah, it's just science fiction, but yeah. horror. But that and the mist, obviously. <laughs> That's three. Yeah. That's not fair. That's okay, fine. Sorry, three's sorry. fine. <laughs> Stephen? Well, it would, for me, it would be or Jaws. haunted films? Or? Well, it would be Jaws. Okay. I still consider that horrifying because if you showed it to anyone today, they'd jump out of their seat when the head comes out mm -hmm. of the, the, the boat uh, and when the shark first appears. And also, it, it, it's for the fact that it took them 126 days to shoot it, which is ridiculous. Um, we'd shoot, we would shot 20 movies by then. Um, and and Halloween because it was something that is low budget at the, and at, at, even though at the time it was still considered low budget and it's just gone on and on and on mm. and it's a franchise I'd love to be able to create something like that because Jaws was the first summer blockbuster that created the summer blockbusters and Halloween was the first film that really changed the horror genre mm. changed it to this what it is now mm. if you didn't have Halloween you wouldn't be where we are now with horror mm. there is about three <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's one. You want to stop there? Um, go for one well, there more. was one when I was very young that scared the pants off me, and it was called Terror at Thirty Thousand Feet with Richard, uh, with William Shatner, and it was a TV movie about a creature that was on this plane and it had escaped, and it, the front half of the plane froze, and then there was this little doll on the floor, and the doll started to burst open, and all this goo came out, and I remember I had the worst nightmares ever had in my life after that when I was about 10 and I've, I think if I'd watched it again once I think and still thought it was scary and it was a TV movie with William Shatner from 1970s anything with Shatner is good for me <laughs> but so, yeah, totally agree with what you said Trilogy of Terror was one for me I watched it again really recently and went oh no I wish I had watched it yeah. the Karen Black was wonderful so there's a thing coming up soon called Fear Street mm. that looks very interesting it's like a trilogy all set in different times but yeah what about you? Um, Just give us one. Horror? Yeah. Or your anything? Your, your horror, your favourite uh, horror. Or your it would probably, I'm gonna, you're going to say boring, it would probably be The Exorcist. Yeah, but that's again Nothing. a groundbreaking film for its time it's and it's still, incredible. today, if you watch it, you still think... I, I still get the shivers. Yeah. Because it's real, it. it's because it incredible. feels real. Yeah, freaking, although it sounds like it was a nightmare. It, it, it was a wonderful film. Wonderful yeah, you film. know the story, do you, on the bottom of the steps? Yes. At the very end? Yes, I do. We'll tell the audience quickly. Go on, you tell them. So yeah. basically, the guy who was playing the priest was a real priest. Yes. 
and the crowd were getting really excited. It was the end of the night. It was probably one of the last shoots, about four in the morning. He couldn't do it. So he said he couldn't do it. And then Friedgreen came up and, sl and he told the cameraman to start rolling. And Friedgreen came up and slapped him around the face so hard that he shaked. And then still rolled, he goes, action. And he did it. And he was shaking as he did it. Absolutely. And he... And Ellen Bernstein there. wasn't very happy with him either. Yeah, and Ellen Bernstein room, was happy uh, because she got pulled. The yank back and the sore back. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. And we thank you. you. Wish you every success and so look forward to what's coming next. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank, thank you, Rome, for Film Festival. Thank you. Doing everything. Brilliant. <laughs>